to another episode of Drug Discovery with Ayn Cure. I'm Sukant Khurana, the founder of Ayn Cure. Uh, and with me is Dr. Amit Shuastav. Uh, Amit is a computational biologist, biochemist, and uh, an excellent drug discovery scientist. Amit has been doing some very interesting work on SARS-CoV-2 with us. Um, instead of discussing things on SARS-CoV-2 that he has been doing, I would actually ask him some basic questions because a lot of students listen to our podcast. Right. So I would uh, like Amit to explain what is molecular docking. Yeah. So um, actually, uh, the molecular docking is that tool basically we use for that uh, identify that first plain MRA study like structures. If we use any type of that uh, protein and drug interaction, first of all, we need to identify that efficacy and binding capacity of these drugs. Okay. So uh, molecular docking generally that is the basic tool to identify that the inhibition capacity and what is that interaction between that uh, drug and ligands. So uh, it is very good uh, type of that tool uh, we use and uh, we get that some basic information about that drug affinities. Before Wonderful. starting. That, uh, yeah. Wonderful Amit, uh, very good answer. Um, better than I have answered. Uh, so. Uh, how do you go about selecting the ligand and the protein for molecular docking? Uh, actually, first of all, uh, we have to identify that uh, drug or ligands. So uh, basically, all these are that literature survey. And then after that, the uh, database search, we identify that some specific type of that component and uh, the protein, which is uh, generally the targeted protein, which is generally used in our study. So uh, as you know, in uh, SARS-CoV-2 spike protein, some AC uh, proteins, all these are the proteins that basically responsible for that prolification of that viral replication in host cells. So mm -hmm. all these are the drugs, if we use uh, the drug and uh, protein interactions, what is that actual uh, interactions? What is that capacity? So uh, according to the screening, the uh, drug properties, we get some specific drug and after that we use that molecular docking tools we got that some specific type of that inhibition if that maximum inhibition we got some specific type of the drug we uh, choose selective drug then uh, we perform that next uh, therapeutic effect so it means uh, it means all these are the drugs and ligand interaction is better we need the better inhibition capacity and the active site sure. active site descriptions or the uh, how it can interact if that uh, drug is completely interact with that active site, it shows that the maximum potency. Wonderful. So that is excellent. But what you're telling fundamentally, it depends on previous knowledge and a, a biologist is making that decision. So yeah. what I think what is needed even for the next generation of drug discovery research, uh, even this process needs to be automated instead of instead of uh, a biologist doing it and then, then there'll be a docking run separately we need to put it on an automated platform of identifying the right ligands and proteins and also uh, running it in an automated manner rather than any individual having to uh, do it one by one but there is that is a long way to go because one of the obvious reasons i can think of is uh, right now we don't know how to go about uh, in an automated way about active site determination. So how do you determine an active site on a protein where, you know, on a yeah. target where again there's no point? Yeah, this is very important point. And uh, actually in every proteins have that some specific codons and the, uh, the capacity of the drugs have that ability to interact with that specific site. So uh, in protein, as you know, uh, there is that chain sequence of that maximum codon sequence of that uh, some uh, generally we can say that the if uh, insulin insulin is that protein have that 51 amino acid with two chains so if that uh, specific chain interactions we get that the uh, any proteins have that uh, two or uh, more chains and what is that exact specific site to interact the protein we uh, use the conformational changes and then after that the if that drug has that different positions what is that exact uh, positions to interact the drug and what is the distance between that protein and uh, amino acid uh, and drug ligand interactions. So after that, we get that some specific positions and that is that specific site to identify to show that the maximum inhibition capacity. 
So that is good. So uh, the only thing I would actually say you use the word codon, but um, likely you're looking at uh, the right structure, uh, the yeah. site, which yeah. can, uh, interchangeably use it as codon can uh, put people sort of uh, make them think of we are discussing DNA and RNA level, which we are not even though you can do talking with RNA. You can do talking with even DNA. And uh, RNA talking is going to be one of the future things because there will be, there are bound to be uh, small RNA modulators, which are going to result in medicines. So I'll not really be surprised if one of the SARS-CoV-2 medicines uh, turns out to be something to tracking with RNA. Uh, wonderful explanation. Uh, I just wanted to make sure uh, the technical correction is there. Uh, so what are the specific tools of RNA talking that you have been using in your work with Michael and what you teach? Because you teach a lot of students too, right, who are working with us. So actually, uh, there is a lots of tool uh, available in uh, database. So, but, uh, but uh, basically, we can use that some specific tools. Generally, that Autodoc 4.2, Autodoc Vena, and IGM. Autodoc IGM. So, this is that specific tool which is generally used for that identify the uh, drug ligand interaction but uh, moreover uh, we use that chimera some uh, other type of the tool which is generally that uh, is called injury is also is that very effective tool to identify that maximum interaction and then some uh, molecular simulation techniques we can use in the uh, is called injures. so there is the lots of the tool and uh, best tool uh, in my way is that autodoc vena and autodoc 4.2 because it is very simple easy to operate and it is good so, uh, not sure. only for that by information, but uh, uh, if that other type of that scientific person is try to uh, familiar with this type of the tool, it is easy to uh, identify how that by bi bio information work and what is that uh, actual uh, role of that by informatics in that uh, molecular biology. So it is good tools. Mm -hmm. uh, I will not go about endorsing the tools. Uh, it's fine, you've done it, you have your favorites. There are 20 plus people talking with us, and they might have different choices, but it's good to know your favorites. Next time I, I know what your favorite tool is. Uh, so, but that's one. Uh, it's good to know what you really like, and uh, I would like to sort of even find out from our other scientists what they really like and what are the reasons. So, you've given me some interesting thing to do. Uh, so. Last thing, I mean, you know, what are the pros and cons of doing computational molecular talking? Because this is not crystal work we are discussing. I mean, just to make it clear to our audience, we are talking of computational prediction, we are not talking of binding, and we are not talking of crystal structures, right? So what are the pros and what are the cons of molecular talking? So uh, the uh, advantage of that molecular docking, uh, the molecular docking first, they give that uh, basic idea about the drug and uh, ligands what is that uh, mm -hmm. property what is that phenomenon and after that uh, we got that basic information about that doc, uh, molecular simulation or that uh, molecular docking we have the sufficient data to express and uh, it that define that the way how we work and what is that our next step so uh, in that uh, molecular docking that basically that give that preliminary data okay so um, mm -hmm. lots of that protein which is generally uh, in case of the uh, computational and then uh, wet lab and then dry lab uh, uh, differences so uh, in wet mm -hmm. lab or that generally in uh, other type of that process we can use so it in, uh, in we need to invest the lots of that money okay so chances of that failure is maximum in that wet lab also so after sure. that we got that some uh, basic things in computational we got that some basic information basic layout and what is that our uh, drug affinity with uh, receptors then after we can move on that wet lab and then uh, we use these type of that uh, proteins and then drug we got some uh, better uh, result as compared to the direct we can move from that uh, uh, wet lab techniques so i think uh, the wet lab uh, um, computational uh, biology or the uh, molecular docking is better before we start into the wet lab techniques sure that's the advantage what what is the disadvantage yeah and uh, the disadvantage is that uh, not much more but uh, just a little bit uh, disadvantage basically uh, 
the phenomenon of that uh, body physiology we don't know how that body it behaves if we prescribe any type of that drugs and then uh, if that drug is completely uh, interact with mm -hmm. our body system so what is type of that physiological changes we got and what type of that effect that can interfere with that uh, interaction with the uh, receptors so it is basic uh, things we got that idea we got that affinity but sometimes that type of that affinity is not uh, much more efficacious in than uh, in vivo studies so this is basic uh, yeah. thing and so, not uh, yeah mm -hmm. so in a in a way uh, to summarize that uh, proteins are floppy they can have multiple structural configurations yeah um, and uh, until the experiment you don't really know but that's it Molecular docking can give you answers ranging from 90% to 100% accurate answers. So to say that, you know, to run into experiments without doing docking is, bluntly speaking, extremely stupid. I worked in several places. Uh, in South Asia also, I know they do the stupidity at times. They do docking after the fact. Uh, but those are not places which are really involved in drug discovery. Anyone who's serious about drug discovery does docking first and then does experiments. Um, uh, there are reasons where you know you're doing uh, drug discovery is based on phenotypic screening, not on it is not a targeted drug discovery. So it's starting from there. Then one can do experiments first. So there are different ways you can see the cat. There is not just one single way to do drug discovery. Uh, uh, I also have some minor thing. I mean, do you think in molecular docking, if right precautions are not taken, can you get false positives? Uh, yeah actually um, if we not get any uh, specific uh, criteria so uh, the result is completely uh, not familiar with our results so uh, it caused that false positive type of that result we got so um, we need some precautions before uh, performing that uh, molecular docking and most important thing is that uh, selection of that ligand and proteins so if we uh, uh, got that specific ligand and protein uh, interaction and if that protein if that uh, that uh, basically that crystalline structures some monomeric and dimeric tetrameric structures so sometimes it's uh, not uh, basically interact with that uh, drug if that interact it shows that is some uh, false negative type of the result which is not basically good for uh, molecular dockings so we need uh, basically that crystal structure and most of the cases we need uh, to uh, interact that ligands with protein or the uh, receptors is that monomeric so it is uh, we got that better result as compared to the dimeric or tetrameric okay uh, that was good information uh, so amit it has been very useful uh, i would uh, thank you very much for uh, being a guest uh, amit i'll again uh, sort of Discuss Amit is a computational biologist, bioinformatician, and a drug discovery specialist working with IronCure on SARS CoV 2 related drug discovery. Uh, we are open to uh, people joining IronCure, contributing, providing feedback. Uh, really, it is a company about doing drug discovery for humanity. We are there to serve people, profit later. We are there to make a difference for SARS CoV 2. We are working on neurodegeneration, we are working on epilepsy, we are working on longevity. Uh, we are working on um, antibiotic resistance, uh, to name a few things. We are basically a poor industrial revolution healthcare company. We will be very happy to hear from you. Our website is www.ironcurerx.com. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.